You may have heard that pasta and ravioli comes originally from China being noodles and dumplings, but what's the truth here? No, no, Chinese. No, 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 no. You guys are using uh, sesame oil. We're using olive oil. It's all coincidental. Yeah, guys, this is for anybody who's ever thought that Italian food and Chinese food shared similarities. I did a whole bunch of research, and I'm trying to put this to rest today. Okay, where does Italian food come from? Because it's so delicious. You uh, went to Italy one time. You think you know the answer. <laughs> I did you recently are typical Chinese. Yeah, I did recently <laughs> come back from Florence, and I just became a geek about this. Uh, so yeah, obviously a lot of people over the years have asked, oh, does Italian pasta come from China? Is it because of Marco Polo in the 12th century? He went to China, right? And then he brought the noodles. And this the is a pretty back. common question on the internet. Right. I mean, even we have joked about it. I've joked about it. But I'm here to find the truth today. But here I will start before I go through the timeline of history of when dumplings and noodles and pasta came about. I'm going to show you 24 pictures that will convince you that Italian food and Chinese food have similar roots. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce at smalasauce.com right now on Amazon. Guys, I am telling you, this goes amazing on Italian food. It goes amazing on Chinese food and everything in between. What is this first photo, Andrew? Is this two photos of egg drop soup from a Chinese American restaurant? What is this? Guys, on the left side, we have the Chinese dish and on the right side, we'll have the Italian dish. And by the way, this is an actual real Chinese dish, right? Yes. Because a lot of people associate this with Americanized restaurants, but it's not. guys. Both Italy and China have egg drop soup. Already mind-blowing. On the right side, it's the Roman egg drop soup. On the left side, it's the general Chinese Would you egg say drop that a soup. lot of people would not know that Italians had an egg drop soup? I didn't know. I, this is a recent thing, a recent discovery to me, guys. You had it when you were in Florence. You had it. <laughs> uh, moving on. And what is this? A jingdu robing. Yes, this is a meat pie from the north of China. And then on the bottom, we have a beef calzone. So I think just visually... The form factors are very similar. Yes, it's different dough. Yes, they're cooked a little bit differently. But you can just say from this picture, they look very similar. I, I like them both. Let me just tell you this right now. That Jingdong robing marks that calzone in terms yes. of flavor. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Jingdong robing Calzones is are not even the closest, fire. most popular Italian dish. We all know this. By the way, guys, I love Italian food. Just No, no, no. The There's definitely some noodle dishes. I mean, I'm sorry, pasta dishes. I would take over a noodle dish. Guys, so. the next photo, I have shrimp fried rice on the left side. And then I have shrimp risotto. On the right side, which risotto is pretty much the Italian rice. So they just look similar. You are just finding the photos that look the same. <laughs> Am I cherry are... picking, guys? This is real. This gets really interesting. Stay tuned. Uh, here on the left side, we have the ginger scallion uh, lobster noodles. You know, with Gong Chong Long, huh? Yes, with e mean, uh, the the Chinese side, and then on the right side, we have lobster pasta. <sighs> wow, they look similar. Yo. Okay, on the left side here, we have the Shanghai Shao Mai, okay, which is the, you know, the dim sum dish, right? But more the from the region that less people are familiar with. Most people are familiar with the Cantonese Siu Mai, right? Yes. And on the right side, we have this sauced up version of a stuffed pasta dumpling called fagiotini. And this is something I actually had in Florence when I was there. But this particular version, I will say, looks a lot more like a kinkali, which is known to have roots from the Mongolian Empire. Right, right, right. So some people are saying it's possible that either through the Silk Road, a lot of Chinese food went to Arab countries, Arab countries to Italy. If you know about Italy, specifically Southern Italy, was conquered by Arabs for like a century or mm -hmm. two back in the day by the Moors. Uh, or it could have came through Genghis Khan through the more Slavic route through Eastern Europe. Right. Or... They just happen to develop independently of each other and just ended up looking very similar. Concurrent thinking parallel evolution. Right. Uh, maybe due to resources and whatnot. But we're going to get into more of those reasons. Guys. Purely, it's purely a coincidental. Left That's side, what... we have cured bacon, essentially pork belly. And on the right side, we have Italian cured bacon. Right, okay. You got the lap yolk and yep. then the cured bacon. Yeah. All right. On the left side of this picture, we have the money bag dumpling, a very well-known dumpling that we use for celebrations in Chinese culture. And on the right side, a different version of the fagiotini, which looks looks like a miniature money bag dumpling. Well, almost. Yeah, I exactly. have got to say, Andrew, that visually you are doing good, even though I don't like to admit. Uh, David, uh, this next photo on the left side, we have what is considered a more northern style zhajiang mian. Okay, right? Fried sauce noodle. Potentially then, from Shandong, just due to the deepness and the darkness. On the right side, we have spaghetti bolognese. 
the most, this is just noodles with meat sauce on top. They look exactly the same. But they taste different. They do taste different, guys. I'm not saying Italian food and Chinese food taste similar. They look similar. Right, right, right. And that's because Italian food uses tomato, whereas Chinese food would use like soy or right. something like that. Or, so, or the herbs would be different. Uh, tomatoes are relatively recent to China, past few hundred years. Anyways, here we have your jiaozi, you know, your, your boiled dumplings, and then you have your ravioli. They look similar in color, tone, and even the way they fold. Obviously, raviolis are made of two different sheets laid on top of each other. But of course, you know, a lot of jiaozi, you can just wrap it. And I think this it. highlights also one of the key ingredient differences, cheese. Chinese food simply does not use cheese. At, no at dairy. Zero percent. Uh, coming up, we have chili oils, guys. Obviously inspired, uh, what inspired Smala on the right side. Shout out to the Calabrian Italian chili oil. And then on the left side, we have a standard kind of like, you know, general Chinese chili oil. Of course, there's all different types. You know what I think it's interesting about Italy too is that they're very provincial and they tend to know more what's in their own province than nationally around Italy. So even though chili oil may be used a lot in Calabria, Andrew, it doesn't mean that it's popular in other Italian provinces. Yes. Uh, but if you go to Italy at the markets, you can usually find some uh, chili oils. But you're right, not on every table or at every restaurant do they have chili oil. All right, guys, let's just talk about some greens. This is an easy one. Garlic string beans. I, did, I mean, Italians have a garlic string bean dish. I think that's interesting. I think they have. They also have grilled eggplant. Obviously, Chinese grilled eggplant is popular. You have Italian grilled eggplant. These are simple ones. Let's get on to the roast pork, David. Siu yuk. We have siu yuk. Okay, or fo yuk, right? We have, call it different names in Cantonese. And then on the right side, you have Italian porchetta. Mm. Guys, these are roast pork with crispy skins. I've actually cracked a tooth one time on some super hyper crispy porchetta one time in LA. It was a little bit crazy. And these, although the seasoning is different, if you took out all the seasoning, they would taste very similar because it's all roast pork. Right, right, right. All right, here we got sesame bread. On the left side, you have the tzuma uh, dabing, which is essentially a big sesame bread bing, right? Bread pancake. And on the right side, you just have some Italian sesame bread. Now, you also see another similarity. A lot of pizza spots on the bottom of their Sicilian slice are putting sesame seeds. So sesame seeds are, look very similar. Right, right, right. Specifically, the grandma slice Sicilian slice yeah. has more of that same texture. All right, here we have dumplings again that just look exactly the same. On the left side, you have a different uh, way to fold a jiaozi, okay, which is just a steamed or boiled dumpling, essentially. And then on the right... You have folded the exact same way, aglinati. Yeah. Aglinati is also another dumpling. Guys, and I'm not going to lie. I'll give it to the Italians. They have oh, hundreds of types of pasta and dumplings, actually. But they yeah, actually, it's crazy. I, I would say in America, we're not familiar with the depth of Italian. Exactly. Giolis. Right. Whether it's raviolis or fagiolis or maglinatis. Here, maybe, maybe I'm cherry picking on this one. This is egg fried rice with an egg cracked on top. And then on the right side, you have risotto with an egg cracked on top. They just visually look the same. Here you have this manto like bread, steamed bread with the scallion. And then it looks like garlic knots. But here's another interesting one. I think that's more interesting is the egg and chive pancake from China, the jiu chai hezi. And it's folded the exact same way as a calzone. Mm. Come on. Looks similar, the way they braid the edges. I like them both, both calorically quite dense. Right. Here you have uh, steamed codfish. And then on the right side, you have Italian salt codfish, I believe. I believe it is salted. Also, both Chinese and Italians use salted fish. Mm. That's not super uncommon, though, around also, the world. Also, Portuguese eat a lot of uh, even more codfish, bacalao. Exactly, exactly. David, here we have... Dried sausages, the Cantonese dried sausage, the lap churn, and then you have the Italian dried sausage here on the right side looking exactly the same. I got to give it to you, man. The evidence is clear. Play is it name. convincing or not? I got more to go, bro. I found more. Look, here we have steamed dumplings in the shape of a leaf, and on the right side we have Italian dumplings in the shape of a leaf, bro. These are called curler, curler dionis. Sorry if I butchered the Italian Good name. Lord, it's not a very well-known dumpling in America, but yes, this is an Italian dumpling, and they are folded exactly the same. My God. Gosh, man. We're, it's Yo, I remember now. eating this specific style on the Hangzhou Jiaozis in Beijing. Mm. Hangzhou Jiaozis is like a fake brand, by the Fond way. Fond memories for yourself, oh, my David. Goodness. Anyways, continuing, we have Xi'an uh, lamb noodles, right? And these are hand-pulled noodles. They're very thick, and that is similar to Parpadel 
ragu, right? This is a ragu, beef ragu sauce with parpadel, which have a similar look to the hand-torn noodles. Right, right. Specifically, a lot of Xi'an noodles look mm. very pasta-like, right? Yes, yes, yes. And then, of course, fi- last but not least, this style of wrapped one ton is wrapped exactly the same as the ravioli in, uh, or this is, sorry, this might be a tortellini, I forgot. Um, but essentially, this is an Italian dumpling. Guys, mm. so what I... I have those photos, not to say that Italian food did come from China, but there are some similarities here, man. The There's, countries are along the same latitude, like relatively. But how do, David, how do, I, I want to ask this question to any anthropologists out there or whatever, food scientists. How do two countries that are so far apart from each other, 7,500 kilometers from each other, have such similar food when none of these other countries in between seem to develop the similar food. Now, it might be because of resources. Italy is a very resource-rich area. It's a peninsula, tons of water, tons of uh, irrigation, great lands to grow stuff, obviously great wine. China also, within such a big country, has a lot of that too throughout the country. But how did it happen? How did it? You did the research, Andrew. You tell me because I'll tell you this. I'm saying China invented it. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you this, guys. Uh, Contrary to popular belief, it was not Marco Polo. It just doesn't line up date-wise, timeline-wise. It wasn't Marco Polo. Plus, if Marco Polo really brought pasta to Italy, you don't think that we'd be calling it Marco Polo pasta or something? He'd definitely take credit. There was a commercial about this a long time ago that went really viral. Right. Where where Marco Polo, like, shows to the... To the queen. Exactly. Now, and I think that this is a generally, like, accepted joke. But, you know, to not piss off all the Italians out there, I actually don't think it's true. So if you look at the timeline, and we're going to come to our conclusion at the end of this video. Hopefully it was uh, interesting for all of you. Uh, 3000 BC, the first, this is when the noodle artifacts were found in Shandong. So noodles have been a part of China for a very, very long time. 3,000 BCs. So these noodle artifacts are 4,000 plus years old. Even when we are cavemen, we know we like men. Yeah, so definitely China had noodles first. That's a fact. 400 BC, some evidence to show a form of pasta was being made in a cave in Italy. All right, so that's, that's pretty, that's still pretty old too. 200 BC to AD, there's records showing that noodles and dumplings were starting to be eaten during the Han Dynasty. So, so Chinese during the Han Dynasty, they are both eating noodles and dumplings. So we got noodles and dumplings at this point. 500 AD, there is records showing the first boiled pasta in Italy, okay, which a lot of people now accept that the pasta was actually brought over by Arabs. Arab nations do, some Arab nations do eat pasta, the Middle East, but it's but it's not as popular as it is in Italy. I've never had Middle Eastern pasta. Right. <laughs> uh, but so 1200 AD, Genghis Khan, Empire's rule. Obviously, there's a lot of influences. There are some dumpling and Chinese influences from because Genghis Khan picks it up from China or that that current dynasty and then brings it across. Right. But the, the the Golden Horde. Yes. Rushes towards Europe. Now, this is where it gets interesting. During the same time, Marco Polo makes his way to China, but the details of his trip are debated, so it's not, it's not really clear what he brought back from China. Ma ke. Right. Uh, and then 1300 AD, pretty much the same time Marco Polo leaves, uh, pasta is a huge staple in Florence and Rome, but this means that pasta was already a thing in Italy well before Marco Polo left on his journey. Okay, so when did uh, Italians start becoming tough guys? And where is that on this timeline? Well, I just you know, need to know. I wanted to wear my tank top and uh, gold chain uh, for the Italian food video. But anyways, guys, so my conclusions are this, David. As someone who's looked into this and, you know, as much as my Chinese pride would tell me to claim the noodles, claim the pasta, it is ours. We gave it the, to the I, Middle the, East and the <laughs> Middle East give it to the Italian no, Peninsula. No, think about it. We are in the Far East. Then it goes to the Middle East. The Middle Easterns, they take over Italy for some period of time. It's quite logical. All right. So that's a possible theory. No, honestly, and I'm not trying to say that Italian food comes from China because obviously the food tastes really, really different, guys. Pasta- As as, as similar as it looks, it's almost like shocking how different it it is. Yeah, it almost could not taste any more different compared to how similar it looks. Zhajiangmian, a noodle dish, and pasta tastes extremely different because there's the acidity from the tomato and everything like that. But 
the form factor is the same. So uh, China had dumplings and noodles long before Italy did. Let's be honest, okay? So it didn't come directly from China, but it may have came through the Middle East over time. But uh, I will have to say that regardless whether it did or did not, it is quite odd that Italian cuisine developed and Chinese cuisine developed to look so similar. Tung Yo Bing and a pizza. So similar, man. You know what I always thought? I always thought, and uh, you know, history is history now. It's over. But I always thought that poor Chinese immigrants that came over to America 100 to, um, let's just say 130 years ago, 1890s is when the, the first recorded incidents were. They could have learned to cook Italian food for really cheap. That could have been a way to stabilize their economic income in supplement to cooking Chinese food. But that doesn't mean people would have eaten at a Chinese-owned Italian restaurant that much either. Also, how would they have learned so much Italian food? They would have had- It was not that. I guess what I'm saying is that the the cheese and the olive oils and the basils and and the the tomato, the Roma tomatoes would have been different. I'm just saying they could have. They could have. No, they could have done the Panda Express. Tell you this, we would not have liked it. We would, no. have, we would have roughed them up. Okay, If, if you're saying to- that instead of only serving Chinese food at Chinese Express spots, they started to learn how to serve fast food Italian. Chinese Italia Expressos. <laughs> yeah, Italian Express food. Uh, that would be interesting, but yeah, I don't think the Italians would like it. Anyways. Uh, actually, the Italian food in Asia, especially in China, is super cheap. Yeah. Because it, it, like when you get it at a hotel, because they're just like, yeah, it's like a noodle. And, and guys, before you say, oh, China didn't create it, Andrew, you guys try to say China created everything. I know China got influences from other places. China is also influenced by the Middle East. You, oh, for sure. We all know those lamb skewers and that whole kind of like shao cow, like barbecue vibe and those spices. Or making anything in a tandoori oven. Yeah. That didn't come from, that's not a, it's yeah, from that's the not a Han from invention, the, you know, side. or even tomatoes. They come from Portuguese traders back in the 16th century. So fairly recently past four or 500 years. Right. So, and also most recently, I don't think it's hard to believe that maybe Hong Kong or Macau chefs who uh, often went to Hong Kong are influenced by other Western countries. We all know the borscht soup that we eat in Hong Kong cafes comes La from Tong. the British, but came come through the Slavic through the Russians, from the Slavs and the Russians to the British to Hong Kong. So there's, mo- in the modern times, I think Chinese chefs can be influenced by Italian food. I think it's possible. But in ancient times, guys, definitely it's very weird and there's no conclusive evidence to where pasta and noodles come from. But I will just say this. I think it's very odd and special in a different way. It's, I think it's very special that Italy and China are so far apart from each other, but those are the two cuisines that look so similar. For sure, for sure. Listen, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Do you guys see the connection? What are some other uh, photographic visual examples that Andrew even left out? I'm sure there's 20, 30, 50 more even. You know, we can only make this video so long and do so much research. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Does it even matter? And do you think there's more room and more opportunity for fusions? I think so. That's why we created Small Ass Sauce. Get it on Amazon or smallassauce.com right now. Let us know what you think. These are fun things, guys. Don't be offended. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.